Have you ever felt so weak and felt like so many problems were around you that you felt like things would never change? I've got some good news for you today. We're going to bring you a message about the joy of the Lord and joy in the Holy Ghost that will bring strength by the Spirit of God. God will strengthen you. The Scripture says He gives power to the faint. And to them who have no might, He increases strength. Let's go right into the program. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Hello, I'm Mark Hankins, and this is my wonderful wife, Trina, and today we have a powerful message from the Word of God on the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Man, I'm telling you, you're talking about a life-changing yes. revelation and experience. Yes. It's really more than just information. To experience the presence of God and the goodness of God, we must recognize, respond, yield to the Holy Spirit, and even be filled with the Holy Spirit for God to be able to work through us in the way that He wants to. Wow, so amazing things we're going to talk about today. But I'm going to start with Romans 14, 17. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17, the Apostle Paul said, The kingdom of God, he said, is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So for the Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, to pick out those three things, that the kingdom of God, the dominion of God, or the realm of God, one translation says, or one translation says the spirit dimension because God is a spirit. Right. So he says the kingdom of God, number one, righteousness. In other words, the free gift of righteousness given to us because of the blood of Jesus. And the scripture says in Romans 4.25 that Jesus was delivered up for our offenses and was raised for our justification. Or actually one translation says Jesus died because of our sins, our trespasses, and he was raised because of our justification. Or you could say it this way, Jesus was not raised from the dead until the penalty for sin was paid in full and you and I were declared righteous or justified. That means God treats us just as if we had never sinned because of the blood of Jesus. So that's a powerful, important message in the kingdom of God is to understand in the New Testament the free gift of righteousness and what it does in you and the boldness that it gives you, the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what we are. The second thing he says is the peace of God have peace in your heart. In other words, in a world where people are upset and troubled and, and confused and angry, he said the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. So you not only have the peace of God, you have peace with God. So you're not disturbed and upset. Uh, the peace of God guards your heart. But the third one is what we're going to talk about today. And that's Paul said, the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. In other words, Joy in the Holy Ghost is a demonstration and a sign of the kingdom of God. That means in the realm of God, when God is working, there is this unusual thing which we will call kingdom culture. <laughs> kingdom culture, he calls it joy in the Holy Ghost. And there's an unusual scripture also in Acts 13, 52. It says that the disciples in the book of Acts were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. So that means one of the great characteristics of the disciples in the book of Acts is they were constantly full of joy and full of the Holy Spirit. So that's an amazing thing even in our world today because the Holy Spirit has not changed. He's the same Holy Spirit and today and in every nation 
when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you yield to the Holy Spirit, that's one of the great qualities and characteristics is you get happy. You get <laughs> full of joy. I like to say the Holy Spirit will have you laughing at the most unusual times. <laughs> In other words, you'll even say, I don't think it's a good time to be happy right now. And the Holy Spirit will prompt you to go ahead and rejoice and even laugh because of the goodness of God, because of the blood of Jesus, we can actually rejoice in the Lord every day. Every day. And I like the word that you use, use, use kingdom culture. Kingdom culture. It's the culture out of heaven. Yeah. And heaven's a happy place. There's, yeah. In the presence of the Lord is fullness, fullness of joy. Yeah. Yeah. And so the culture of a Christian, no matter where, what country you're from, yeah your position, your status, whatever. You know, There's a culture of joy. Yeah, and the kingdom culture would be the culture of heaven. Right. And so that's why 1 Peter 1, 8 yeah. says this, even though you don't see him, or Jesus, you don't see him right now, mm -hmm. you love him and you love Jesus and yet believing, you rejoice, he said, with joy unspeakable and full oh of glory. Right. So he's saying that's kingdom culture. Other translations say it this way, it is joy unspeakable, full of glory. And I think the Amplified Bible says it is heavenly, triumphant joy. <laughs> that means it's not a natural world or heathen joy. This joy comes from heaven, comes from the Holy Ghost. And this joy on the inside of you, he said it is heavenly and it's triumphant joy, right. which means you could actually say your joy is a demonstration of the triumph of Christ. That when Jesus is raised from the dead, he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. He triumphed over them openly. That means the triumph of Christ was a celebration, a celebration of victory for every man because Jesus triumphed. His victory is our victory. And the apostle Paul said, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. That means this victory belongs to every believer and your joy is a demonstration of the triumph of Christ. If you believe Jesus won the victory, his victory is yours. You need to go ahead and get happy right now wherever <laughs> you are in your house. Come on, just go ahead and start laughing, start praising, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. gladness. This is joy in the Holy Ghost is kingdom culture. Yeah, I like Philippians 4, 4. It says, gladden yourself. The Amplified Bible says, rejoice in the Lord evermore. Yeah. Again, I say rejoice. Or gladden yourself. Get happy. Yeah. Sometimes we, we as Christians, we get into the culture of the earth, and yeah. then we gotta stir ourselves up yeah. and gladden us. Rejoice. Yeah. You get full of joy, and then you gotta yeah. rejoice. <laughs> and actually rejoice in the Lord always. Always. And again, I say rejoice. So the Lord said to me one time, He said, if you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice. Right you would rejoice every day. So if he said rejoice always, if somebody asks you what time it is, you ought to say, well, it's a good time to rejoice right now. In other words, Jesus is Lord, I'm saved, I have eternal life, right. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, I'm gonna go ahead and get happy right now. And it shows you that you've cast all your cares on the yes. Lord because he cares for you. Yeah. That's what it says in Philippians 4, 2. It said, don't worry about anything, yeah. but to pray about it. Yeah. And then the peace of God that, passes understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus and you can go yeah. on your way full yeah. of joy. He's not stressed out or upset right. because your cares you cast on the Lord because he cares, he cares for, you. for you. Again, Smith Wigglesworth said we could always say my father God takes care of me in grand style. So when you cast your care on him, means that you're not worried. We all have responsibilities, right. but we refuse to have anxiety and worry. We cast that care on the Lord and we go ahead and give uh, rejoicing praise to God because he's taking care of us in grand style. That's right. And it shows on your face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, your face is the meter. <laughs> very interesting. You said that because the, the Psalmist David actually said 
that that will change your countenance. So if your joy doesn't at least change your countenance, then you need to rejoy. You need to rejoice <laughs> and change your countenance so that when people look at you, they'll say, wow, there's something, they, that person has something that didn't come from Walmart. You know, That's you right. got some that came from heaven. That's right. Amen. I heard uh, uh, T.D. Jakes uh, years ago one time he was preaching. I thought it was a great point. And he said, uh, if you don't rejoice, the devil will think he's winning. <laughs> ah. In other words, the devil don't know everything. He just throws adversity and trials and thoughts and, and pressure. And, the, and if you don't rejoice, you know, if you get sad, and if you act defeated, the devil say, well, that's working. Let's just keep beating them up. But if the devil throws trial and verse at you and you go, ha, 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 you let the devil know that's not going to work on not you because of the power of the blood of Jesus. And you have authority over the devil. Actually, demons are afraid of you. Jesus said, wow, you have authority over all devils. And he said, if you resist the devil, he'll run from you. And so sometimes joy is a good way to let the devil know that Jesus is Lord and you are not defeated. That's right. He says, put on the garments of praise mm -hmm. instead of the spirit of heaviness. So yes. th that must be something that wants mm -hmm. to come on us in this world. Yes. A spirit of heaviness yes. and worry and stress. Oppression. Oppression. That but the quickest way to break mm. that off is put on the garment of praise and just open up your mouth. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise Begin God. And praise something God. begins to change. Praise God. <laughs> that's, that's an act of faith right there. Just to start giving glory to God. It says yes. Abraham became strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded what God has promised he is able also to perform. And in other words, That's we're right. just the believer and he's the performer. And so when Peter said, yet believing, you rejoice. So some people say, well, I'm fighting a fight of faith right now. Things are really <laughs> tough. Well, no, the fight of faith is fought like this. I believe, ha, I'm going to get happy right now. I believe God's working on my case and Jesus is Lord. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. And God is a strong God. He's very strong. And His people are strong. Yes. And to uh, be godly yes. is to be full of joy. Yes. And expectation. Unusual, isn't yes. that? Because most people yes. don't connect their strength to their level of joy. Most time people say, well, somebody's really tough, you know, if they just have a real stern look all the time. <laughs> when really in the kingdom of God, He said, what gives you strength is the joy of the Lord. That's right. You know, and I love our culture that we have. Again, we're talking mm -hmm. about culture and kingdom. You know, in the presence of God, there's lots of praising, lots of singing. Mm -hmm. There's fellowship. And that's the way it is here on the earth with Christian people. You get together, mm -hmm. you're going to have fellowship, you're going to have rejoicing. And there's a song. And that song just begins to break you free, or that it's a celebration of something that has happened yeah. already that you're reminding each other yeah. of, and it just begins to uh, increase and yeah. increase until there's an explosion. And usually mm. in that explosion yeah. of faith, it's mm. a, your faith is released huh. as you rejoice. Yeah, actually uh, Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine. In other words, you don't need wine or marijuana or anything under the influence of, of drugs or alcohol. Right. He said, but be filled with the Spirit. And actually the word there, be filled, is the word be being filled with the Spirit. Be being filled. I like the way Smith Wigglesworth said it. He said, being filled with the Spirit is a luxury, but it's not just a luxury. It is a divine command. Amen. That means we cannot meet the conditions of the day or the challenges that we face without the help of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. That means uh, drink from the Holy Spirit, yield to the Holy Spirit until you're filled or under the influence. That means Wigglesworth said the Holy Spirit <clears throat> will think through your mind right. and he will speak through your lips and he will magnify Jesus in a way that you never could without his help. Wow, think about that. The Holy Spirit, he has power over your intellect. Yeah. He has power over your voice. I like to say he'll take the whine and the victim out of your voice and he will magnify Jesus in a way we could never do right. without his help. So the Holy Spirit 
takes the things of Christ and makes them so big that you'll even be laughing in the face of the enemy and say, ha, look what Jesus has That's done. Right. Or look who I am in Christ. And then resist the devil even with a laugh. That's right. You know, um, there's a saying when people drink a lot that you can hear the liquor talking, mm. you know. Yeah. And it's true. On the other hand, it changes, your personality, it changes yeah. your personality. They start talking and being real free. Yeah. But when you get filled with the yeah. Holy Spirit, you can hear the Spirit talking. It changes your personality. The Holy Spirit, yeah. You begin to <laughs> be free and full of joy and bold and just yeah. do things you couldn't do before because the Holy Ghost is talking through yeah. you. Joy in the Holy Ghost yeah. and you're yielded to Him. Actually, in Ephesians 5.18, be not drunk on be filled. And there's many evidences of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And joy is definitely one of them. Right. But the next verse says, <clears throat> speaking to yourself mm -hmm. in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I like to say it this way, uh, uh, being filled with the Spirit, speaking are when Jesus said, come to me and drink the Holy Spirit like a river will flow out of you. Jesus didn't say, come to me and think. He said, come to me and drink. <laughs> in other words, the Lord said, you can't have just a thinking relationship with God. You need to have a drinking drink. relationship with God. And he said, and if you'll actually drink better, you will think better. And so when Jesus said, come and drink, he is referring to the Holy Spirit. So I know something about drinking. One is you cannot drink with your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't drink and not know it. You can't right. drink with your mouth shut. That means if you're going to drink, you have to open your mouth. So very interesting that they were filled. And he said, speaking, that means the minute they opened their mouth, began to speak psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, then the Holy Spirit just filled them while they were speaking or they were drinking while they were speaking. And they got so full, they got full of joy and they were speaking. So my mama, many times, she'd start praising the Lord, giving glory to God yeah. and just drink from the presence of God. And then she would speak. Psalms 27, yes. the Lord is my light and yes. my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So my mama would just start praising, open her <laughs> mouth wide. Actually, yeah. the scripture says, open your mouth yeah. wide, wide for the latter rain. Mm -hmm. He said, open your mouth and I'll fill it. In other words, when you as a believer open your mouth wide for the latter rain. You know, expect big things from God. Expect miracles from God. Yield to the Holy Ghost and allow Allow praise to come out of your mouth and then laughter will come out of your mouth and then you might just get a little too happy. You might make a few people uncomfortable, <laughs> but you're laughing and rejoicing. And actually one of my favorite quotes comes from C.S. Lewis who said, joy is the serious business of heaven. That means any times the kingdom of God or heaven is taking care of serious business, it will happen in an atmosphere of joy. So sometimes when you just start rejoicing and laughing and praising, you ought to tell somebody, excuse me, I need to take care of some serious <laughs> business right now. In other words, I'm going to praise God because the situations I'm facing may be too big for me, but they're not too big for the Spirit of God. They're not too big for the Lord. Amen. And so I'm going to pray and I'm going to laugh. Joy is serious business. You could actually just say it that way. Joy is serious business. So don't let the devil steal your joy. Matter of fact, you ought to just start laughing and praising right now wherever you're at. Actually, James chapter 1 verse 2 says, count it all, all joy. joy. Count it. He didn't say it was a joy. He said, count it all joy whenever you have different trials and adversity and pressure coming against you. Count it all joy, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have its perfect work, and you will be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Wow, that means everything, every need will be met. You'll be perfect and entire. He said, but you need to count it all joy. In other words, that's just an instruction. The Holy Spirit says when you're facing that adversity, count it all joy. Right. And one translation says count it maximum joy. That means turn your joy up a couple of notches right. when you're facing adversity and go ahead and laugh and praise God because what the enemy meant for evil, the Lord turns around for your good. You know, in the Bible, there's case after case 
of stories, you know, that they counted it joy. And the way that they counted it joy was singing mm -hmm. and praising. Yeah. And that's an easy way. We can just yeah. put some music on, begin to sing or pray till you get that song like yeah. your mama. She would get a song, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. And then, my goodness, the devil can't stay around yeah. when you're full of joy. Depression can't stay yes. around. And imagine the Apostle Paul, uh, Paul and Silas, Acts chapter 27, I think it is, uh, Paul and Silas in prison. 16. Acts 16, yep. 27 maybe. Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> Paul and Silas in prison. That's no, actually Acts 16, 25. Uh, Paul and Silas, I was thinking of Psalm 27. Acts 16, 25, Paul and Silas at midnight in prison. Their hands are bound, yeah. feet are bound, and it says their backs were bleeding. And at midnight, whoo, in the darkest hour, they prayed and sang praises to God. Right. And it said, and the prisoners heard them. Well, the prisoners weren't the only ones that heard them. Their praises went right up into heaven. And the power of God came down and shook that prison. And every chain fell off and they went free. Because at midnight, while they started singing praise to God, the power of God turned their situation around. You know, when you praise, it's just the atmosphere of heaven comes right on in. Yes. And no darkness can stay yes. where heaven is. You just start praying. Woo. I always say, uh, yep. Paul, I imagine Paul and Silas in prison saying, All right, Mr. Devil, yeah. looks like you did a good <laughs> job. You got me embarrassed. You hurt me, got me beat, got my hands bound, got me my feet bound. But, Mr. Devil, you made a big mistake. You should have taped my mouth shut. Because as long as I can open my mouth and I can move my mouth, I can move <laughs> a mountain if I can open my mouth. So they just started praying and praising out loud yeah. and giving glory to God. And Dad Hagen always said, the answer came while wow. they were praising Amen. God. Yeah. Woo, there ought to be a happy, joyful praise <laughs> come out of your mouth. Yes. And no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're facing right now, if you'll dare to lift your voice and start magnifying the Lord, no matter how you feel, no matter how things look, you may be having uh, adversity on several different areas of right. your life. But he said, count it all joy. I dare you start praising God and then just laugh and say, ha ha, Mr. Devil, you can't do that to me. That's not going to work in my life because Jesus is my Lord. Yeah. You know, that reminds me of um, the scripture that says uh, that we count it all joy. And when we do that, our prayers are received. You know, yes. we receive with joy. Yeah. Joy and Yet believing. That's right. You receive. Yeah. So go from believing to receiving. to receiving. So your faith works when you're praising God. Actually, joy is a receiving factor or a harvesting factor. Right. Wow. So while you're praising, rejoicing, you're receiving strength. You're receiving grace. Amen. You're receiving mercy. You're receiving answers. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Psalm 8, 2 says, yeah. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, yes. God has perfected praise that he would still the enemy and avenger. So even out of a child's mouth, yes. praise will or a stop child of the God. enemy. Or a baby Christian <laughs> yeah, even. even a child of God. Even that, that you just you might not know the believer. whole Bible, but if you yeah. know how to praise God, it'll stop the devil right And there. he says God ordains strength yes. to come out of your mouth. So right now, Trent and I just encourage you to open your mouth, start praising Amen. God, speak the word of God, and the devil will have to run. So I dare you to rejoice right now and laugh in the face of the enemy that Jesus Christ is Lord yeah. and Satan is defeated. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. Do you ever feel weak in your life? Have so many problems around you that you feel like things will never change? We have good news. The Holy Spirit takes what Jesus has done for us and makes it a reality in us. We might have felt like giving up. You may have felt like giving up on your marriage. You may have felt like giving up on your ministry or your church or felt like giving up on yourself. But the Holy Spirit won't <laughs> let you give up. He'll strengthen your inner man with mighty power. The way you yield to the Holy Spirit is the same way you yield to all the will of God. God doesn't want to just clean you up. He wants to fill you up. When you order the Holy Spirit package, you get our brand new book, The Holy Spirit is a Genius, plus the four CD set, The Holy Spirit, My Best Friend, and the four CD set, The Unlimited Language of the Holy Spirit. Your gift of $25 or more 
will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train leaders around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. I trust you've been blessed by the Word of God. I tell you, we get thrilled just talking about the person <laughs> and the work of the indwelling Holy Spirit. He's the greater one that lives on the inside of us, and He's the one that puts us over. That means you're not going to go under, you're going to go over. And so we have some powerful resources. The Holy Spirit package is not only some teaching and some CDs, but we have a new book called The Holy Spirit is a Genius. If you'll listen to Him, He'll make you look smart. And we talk all in that book about the Holy Spirit yielding to Him and also about the hidden language, the unlimited language and yielding to the Holy Spirit and the power of speaking yielded to the Holy Ghost and He brings you victory in every area of life. So I encourage you to get the resources that are available to you and actually also uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the programs over and over. We enjoy it immensely and also Thank you for being a partner with us as we preach the gospel all over the world. Uh, next, we're going to Nepal, then to Colombia. We came from Brazil, then we're going to Kenya, East Africa. We're going all over the world, and your partnership with us enables us to take the simple message of the word of faith and the work of the Holy Spirit and impart and carry it to nation after nation. So we say thank you so much, and may God richly bless you. Kenneth E. Hagan said, In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. It's amazing to hear stories of people who have received our books in very remote places, such as prisons, deep in the bush of Africa, and many other distant lands. Our desire is to have our books translated and distributed in as many languages as possible. These books can be left with pastors and leaders who in turn can share the books with others. We believe people's faith will be ignited for many generations to come. We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they are able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. Through the printed page, we are seeing an explosion of the reach the word is having around the world. Through your partnership, you are helping us to pass the necessary ammunition to believers around the world. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in a hundred different languages. Each project requires having the book translated, typeset, printed, and distributed. The initial cost for each project is approximately $5,000. Many partners and pastors have stepped up and sponsored one of the projects. Your World Mission partnership of any amount makes a big difference. If you would like to sponsor one of the projects, there are many more nations to reach. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast, listen to the radio program, read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith anytime and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.